Praise be to God. So right now I'd like to speak about the seed of the serpent. Okay, so not serpent seed. And the idea of this quote unquote mark of Cain that has to do with the devil impregnating Eve and bringing forth a kind not after its own kind but a hybrid of sort or just call Cain a hybrid is ridiculous and just impossible now even looking at Genesis 3.15 what would you say about this then I'm not saying they don't have an answer, but I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. So the seed of the devil here, you know, there is something going on. It's spiritual. I like to speak about it. And then her seed, if her seed is Cain already, is the devil going to fight against his own hybrid. I mean, the devil does kind of go after his own. He wants sinners to die in their sins. He just doesn't always have the allotment to do so, of course, because that's what he would want. The moment you would sin, he would like to slay you, and then you'd be damned. But God has jurisdiction over the breath, so on and so forth just doesn't make any sense now the seed of the serpent has to do with a spiritual wickedness okay and it's a learned wickedness it's not anything genetical here no hybrids okay the fallen ones are not hybrids okay and giants we're talking about in the bible what is it between 11 and 13 feet i think maybe 14 feet in most is what we know in the bible so the book of enoch is silliness i think the reading that you can get from there is like 500 foot giants or something so, and it could be worse depending on how you read it. So, yeah, it's silly. So there's this spiritual seed of wickedness, okay? That moves people to believe something like the book of Enoch, all right? It could be another man, you know, that has a demon spirit. But just man as a sinner is understood to be of a bad seed. And what that means is, if you look at the scriptures, is that you have turned to sin by a choice, okay? And at one point, you can even have been a good seed before. So this really knocks out the idea of an original sin that there's like a spiritual curse. Not that original sin people will use the seed of the serpent to teach original sin. At least I haven't really heard that. But when you look at it, it can't be. All right, so allow me to start by going to Isaiah chapter one. All right, and this is referring to, now this would knock out then that racist doctrine of like different skin colors being of Cain and you know all that because here in Isaiah 1 4 it says ah sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evil doers children that are corruptors okay so the seed of evil doers was backslidden Israel okay and backslidden Judah, okay? Basically backslidden Jews, 
you know, Israelites, you know, in general. But they were good, you know. Even Serpent Seed has to acknowledge that that was a good line because Jesus came from that line. So, but this is proving that you were once good, but then you've turned bad. Okay. They have forsaken the Lord. Okay, they are gone away backward. Okay, and if you focus on this reading, though, it's very important because it's their inward choice that messed up their outward. Okay, so it's not genetic, okay, by creation. It's a spiritual wickedness, okay? And it's much like the devil. The devil was good as Lucifer, and then he became a devil okay and he was named a devil the devil and that's the name one of his names that he received so god named him that okay and unless if i guess if you believe you think that lucifer is allowed to name himself or something but i don't see that but Anyway, God calls him that, so don't be so upset when we call you that if you're going to serve Satan, okay? Because you're the seed of the serpent, okay? But you weren't always like that. For example, if you're a backslider, you weren't always like that, okay? Now, I'll go over to Matthew 13. This is very difficult for anyone to explain now on the born sinner thought, okay? We have this parable, okay, that we have some reinforcement with it as well. Okay, so I'll start to read. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Okay, so right here, this parable destroys Calvinism. I mean, it's impossible because the Son of Man soweth the good seed in his field okay the field is the world the field ends up as having wheat and tares okay so the world cannot be the elect when it comes to gospel doctrine it's just not that anyway okay but this is specific gospel doctrine here okay but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat so the devil come and sow tares among the wheat and went his way okay but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir didst thou not sow good seed in thy field for whence then has it tares he said unto them an enemy has done this the servant said unto him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay lest while you gather up the tares you root up also the wheat with them let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. We gather the wheat into my barn. Okay. Now, if we go to this, the disciples ask, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Okay, now this is very important. Matthew thirteen thirty seven. he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. So the son of man sowed good seed in his field. Okay. The devil cannot create anyone a sinner. Okay. The devil doesn't have power to create anything. Okay. By his own jurisdiction, by his own will. He can do different miracles and stuff like that, but he's not the creator all right so when he sows a tear the tear cannot just magically spring up as a born sinner or a person or something number one the devil can't do that when he sows a tear he changes someone that should be wheat into a tear because the son of man sowed good seed in his field so the tares got messed up okay by the devil the devil cannot make anyone. But then also, if that were to even be the case, which it cannot be, you could be going to different doctrines here, the serpent seed and all these strange and diverse doctrines. We know that some then are not born that way. 
that would be more like the serpent seed that the serpent seed you know that doctrine could possibly go here i'm not like following those people's teachings that much you just know about it oh yeah you know some are born you know after adam and eve but then some are the hybrids or whatnot but this is silly you know but what we do know is that god starts everyone off good because he sows the good seed and we understand that the enemy that sowed them is the devil okay and the terrors of the children of the wicked one what makes you a child of the devil because you sin okay and the babies cannot sin we keep showing you the verses in the bible will you receive them at some point okay So no, I mean, there is no way. And if you are wheat, you are righteous. Okay, you cannot be a sinner. All right, so you can't be a saved sinner. You can't be sinning wheat in the story. Okay. And so here, this is the way I like to show this. You would say, well, how can someone be wheat then become a tear? How does that work? okay well the bible teaches this all right if i go to jeremiah okay if i go to jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21 yet i had planted thee a noble vine holy a right seed how then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Okay. So the language is found in the Bible that they were planted right, literally, and then are now degenerate. Okay. Degenerate. Okay. So the generation the first time must have been good. And the sayings of God in the Old Testament uphold being born again. We don't find that word in the English, but born upright again, I did a video on that. It's upheld in the teachings in the Torah that when they got converted, it was as they were like onto a babe. Okay. Which we know is the correct teaching from the New Testament. So, I guess how does this all work you know the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman all right we all know satan never had and never will have an actual body there's no hybrids and things like that so it is you know partly spiritual the lesson being taught by god in genesis 3 there's no doubt about that now the seed of the woman is jesus and for jesus to do what he does he had to come into a body and he had to go back into his body and be raised from the dead. And he's still in the glorified body. And he ever will be. So part of that, and the gospel thereof, has to do with the actual body, which most people get wrong. All right, so they missed the gospel there. We talked about the born sinner thing a little bit in this video. But we as the church, it's a spiritual church. Okay, it's no buildings and all that. We're in Christ. And we're in Christ through the Holy Ghost. Christ is still in an actual body. And that we are a body. But we're in his body. Okay, we're just the members of the body. Okay. So in 1 John, we see what makes us the church. Okay, part of the church, however you would like to word it exactly. All right. And the righteous shall shine forth okay the wheat all right we're not degenerate at this point verse 9 of 1 john 3 whosoever is born of god does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of god so you cannot sin when you're in christ okay some of us say well how believers sin well, in this very particular, they have to depart from Christ. Okay, that's why, you know, an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Now, in judgment, 
the verbiage changes because in judgment, the Lord would talk about someone spiritually dead and then warn them about burning in hell. Okay. But the warnings to the saints about not being spiritually dead is sin not. I write unto you that you sin not. Okay. That's that warning. But then once you sin, if you do, you don't have to. But if you do, then there's warnings coming at you about the fire of hell. Basically, God's trying to get the backsliders to come back. So there has to be spiritual implications. But the word seed here is used spiritually. Okay. It is the word sperma. But it's a spiritual idea, of course, because it's following holiness in spirit. Okay. And, and then once you do that, the flesh is fine. Okay. That's how the Bible teaches it. And... The only way this gets a start is through the blood of Jesus to be forgiven of the past sins. Now, the parable doesn't say the tear can become wheat or something. And the parable doesn't say that wheat can become tear. But that's not, you know, the only point the parable is trying to make. But we know from the parable that the Son of Man sowed good seed. Okay? And that's what we know. And if you want to take it that rigid, then what are you going to do with all the babies in the world? Because, I mean, if you just hold to the rigid, once saved, always saved, or the rigid, you know, unconditional election of Calvinism or something, if you're going to be that rigid, you're just going to run into, well, are all the babies wheat? Because Calvinism doesn't really say that. Maybe some Calvinists might. There's Calvinists that will, you know, believe in their infant damnation and all that. But if all the babies are wheat, then why are they wheat? Because God created them right. Okay. So then you're just going to get into a point of submission where you're going to have to uphold proper creation, no born sinner. Or you're going to get stuck with the infant damnation. It's not that rigid. Okay. It's just one teaching. But the son of man soweth the good seed. And the field is the world. So the field, if Jesus died for the world, well, he died for tares and wheat. Okay. And we know this to be true. For he's the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Okay. We're the special ones. Okay. We're the wheat. Okay. But you can become a degenerate plant. That's what the Bible teaches. And then you can become regenerated. So the generate, the generation, the initial has got to be good. Or else nothing follows right. Okay. So what's the covering then? All right. Because if I go to Isaiah 30, it talks about this. And there's different seed spiritual wickedness doctrines. Okay. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe unto the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So they go back down into Egypt. That's the way this is being taught. Okay. And they were taken out from there because their children, because he called his child out of Egypt, his son, right? But they're rebellious. Okay. And they add sin unto sin. Okay. They don't cover with a covering of the Spirit of God. So if you have that seed there, you won't sin. But they're sinning. Okay. Anyway, I think these are all the different things I want to say about that thus far. But yeah, the seed of the serpent, the seed of the woman. You know, there's some technical things going on there. You know. And... You know, we can go to parable of the field and maybe look at some things the prophets taught. And we see some backsliding in there, losing salvation, of course. So, yeah, I don't think the weed and the tares has to be that overly rigid. But when you look at it, how are you going to solve all these different conclusions people make? And they're going to want this doctrine, this doctrine, this doctrine. They're going to want born sin or saved in sin, once saved, always saved. Or then just take the full jump into Calvinism. How are all these things going to balance out? They just don't balance out. And it just doesn't make any sense. you know. So it's important to try to make sense of these verses. We're supposed to be learning from God ourselves. 
So we want to learn what God has for us. So yeah, you can become degenerate plant, okay? And that's just the way it is. And you read Jeremiah too, you know, it's explicit that they backslid, okay? Because they forsook God. And God is telling them they're in a damned state and they were not before. So praise God.